if it is or if it ain't, it's going to come out. everybody it's your girl miracle sims and you are listening to god sex and love your daily dose of inspiration the juice it is april the 28th 2022 and today the topic is does god hate you Whew. well y'all <laughs> i hope that you all had a great day yesterday mine was just fine um, I did have to take a moment to just kind of apologize to the people that watched live yesterday because for some reason, um, the audio did not record on the video yesterday, but, uh, thank you to those that tuned in to the podcast version and, um, yeah, so there's a link on that episode that I guess will be there forever <laughs> as long as, you know, YouTube and Rumble and all those things are up, but, um. But yeah, I just wanted to, you know, go on the record and say my apologies for that. You know, it's just one of those things, technological difficulties and whatnot. Um, so, so, okay, so, <laughs> um, nothing to report for yesterday either. I mean, I, I worked out, so, you know, I'm pushing through y'all, I'm pushing through. Um, but outside of that, just, you know, hustling from home trying to make sure I got everything for this show coming up on the 7th, um, which, um, let me see, do I got something to show y'all? I mean, for those of y'all that don't know, yes, I'm going to be performing at the Decatur Arts Festival, um, on May the 7th, and yeah, if you follow me on social media, then you'll probably see links about that, uh, I don't think I put the little poster, so I will try to upload the poster, um, so you all can see it if you want to see it, but, but either who, anywho, basically, yeah, Madame Miraculous is going to be, uh, performing at the Decatur Arts Festival, and so, in turn, your girl will be there. Um, we're giving out free Mother's Day gifts, compliments of Mom Bomb, so if that's something you all want to try to get, then stop by and see us. Stop by and see yours truly, uh on May the 7th, and yeah, participate and, and get you a free Mother's Day gift <laughs> at the show, The Mother's Day Dilemma. Um, outside of that, yeah, that's that's all that was pretty much happening yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't think I had anything else planned. Um, anyway, let's get into this talk, y'all. Let's get into this talk, because, um, Depending on where you at, I don't know, this whole thing might be pulled today. <laughs> well, um, let's see, let's see. So, um, long story short, um, before I even started my prayer meditation this morning, this phrase came into my mind, and it was, God, the God of the Bible doesn't hate you. I know that's long. <laughs> uh, that's a long title, and I thought that was going to be my title today. The God of the Bible doesn't hate you. Um... And I mean, I guess there was a few inspirations or whatnot, um, but for whatever reason, I think something specific was on my mind. Um, I think like the relationship that people have with, they call it spirituality, but then a lot of times they allude to the God of the Bible and they allude to the Bible um, and everything like that. But then they may not be living accordingly and whatnot, but you, you see like those the people that are, you know, well, I'll just say this. You'll see people that, um, I don't know if I would say struggling, but, uh, how can I say that, Lord? Do you want me to say that? <laughs> um, anyway, well, I'm trying to tell y'all the inspiration, basically, um, outside of me thinking of that phrase this morning, um, Basically, I guess it's just an observation that sometimes people, um, you know, they struggle with, I guess, 
what they want and what they think um, in comparison to what the Bible says. And, and I, hey, I was there too. Uh, you know, I'm human too. So, I mean, I'm not sitting here trying to act like I'm perfect by any means. I think I've shared uh, a lot of my testimonies and a lot of my shortcomings and a lot of things that I've been through in my own life, you know. So, I'm not sitting here pointing any fingers at people that are, you know, going through their process, you know. Um, but I guess that came to my mind today. Um and on one hand, it does seem as if people that are, you know, again, struggling or going through their process or, you know, um, they it's like they want this relationship with God, but then they don't want to um, do what the Bible say. I mean, that's just a, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it at five something in the morning, um, you know, I think that that's what it kind of boils down to. And again, I was there too. You know, I was there too. Um, struggling. Struggling with, uh, you know, wanting to do things my own way or doing things in the way that I think or whatnot. And, and ultimately not doing things according to the way that, you know, God put in place. And um, so, and, and then also I believe that there is something within us that, that just desires a relationship with God, whether we acknowledge that or not. So that's something as well. Like sometimes we, we, that desire is within us. It is coming out, but at the same time, we are either suppressing it sometimes, or we are again, just, just choosing to do our own thing. Um, in spite of that, in spite of that subtle reminder that, Hey, you need that relationship. Hey, you need to cultivate that relationship with God. Hey, you need to do things God's way, X, Y, and Z. So, and then, so some, right, those that do suppress, right, um, but they might have like a little twinge of, of something that is holding them on, you know, um, sometimes they may feel like God hates them, right? Um, and at first, you know, I just was like, well, that narrative, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think, and I don't think we, any of us wants to think that God hates us, you know, um. Or that God hates anyone, you know? I mean, obviously, he's done so much, right, to to show love, you know? Um, main, the main thing being <laughs> sacrificing Jesus on the cross or coming down himself as the sacrifice <laughs> for us um, to take the place of the wrath that is to come on those that don't follow the law. That's, that's again, bad, lack of a, a more posh way to say that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, you know, he did all these things and put all these, this, the main contingency in place to, um, to draw us near to him. And right. And if you, if you have any inkling of desiring a relationship with God, I believe that he's working with us on that. Um, and then the grace and the mercy and the patience and the time, you know, um, at some point I was, ended up reading the account of Noah and, um, that was interesting to read this morning. Um, I didn't put any of that in the go deeper section, but I, I read a, a good chunk of, yeah, that account with Noah. And that was interesting as well, because it was talking about how, um, you know, it kind of grieved, uh, God's heart, heart to make man. Right. But then, um, he showed mercy on Noah um, and his family and everything like that. And, um, you know, obviously the whole account, y'all know it, y'all know it already. And then how uh, the the covenant, the covenant between, you know, man, you know, the earth, all flesh and everything between God and man. And, you know, again, how that rainbow is a symbol of that which is very interesting because I was thinking about how the rainbow has been hijacked and y'all already know. Um, and, and that in itself, honestly, when I was reflecting on that this morning, if I, if I can just be honest a minute, um, it really felt like a slap and mockery to, to think of how that, that symbol, um, of the covenant, right. Of, of God saying, Hey, okay. Although it grieves my heart what 
I see man is doing, I'm no longer going to do that thing I did early before. And, and people are using that symbol as a mockery. It's like a mockery of that, to be honest. Um, um, that might be Pope as well. <laughs> Y'all might not like that I said that. Um, but that's just me and my little personal opinion. Like when I think about, again, when I read that account this morning and just reflecting on, you know, God making that promise to us and seeing Honestly, you can see that promise in action when you see all the crap going on in the world and you see that God did not just blotted us out and been like, and y'all know that any earthly human would have done that. That's the thing. Like if any of us was in God's shoes, most likely we'd have been like, you know what? Psh, I'm done with this earth thing. I'm done with it. They're not listening. They're not, you know, the majority, the majority of humanity is not listening and I'm done. Like y'all know y'all would y'all do that with people every day. And so um the fact that God has shown his grace and mercy and, and has a time and and you you know we got time to like and not not saying we got a lot of time, but I mean every single day that you live, right? Every single day that you have breath in your body, you have another chance to get it right when it comes to God. And and he don't have to do that. Like he really don't. Like being God. You don't have to do any of that, really, you know. Um, didn't have to sit and come down in the form of man as Jesus and didn't do all that. Didn't have to do that. Didn't have to do that at all. Could have just stayed and be like, you know what? I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm not doing it anymore. I, I blotted them out one good time. You know what I'm saying? I started it over one good time, and I made the promise that I'm not going to do that anymore. And it's like they they, they laughing at my promise. They, like they they taking it as a joke mocking it all right anyway <laughs> so <laughs> i'm just talking about the inspiration right now y'all um the inspiration behind um the topic for today but anyway so with all of that in mind right um i went deeper i went deeper and i'm, I'm studying and whatnot i'm looking at verses and whatnot i'm like okay you know because again you don't want to think that god hates anybody like that's not what you want to think but hey, I don't know, look, friends. I look, as I went deeper, all I'm gonna say is this right here. I mean, hey, you know, this might be Pope. We might all need to reflect on it. We might all need to go deeper. We might all need to, you know, pray and everything like that. But it seems like, you know, not only is there things that God hates, but there might be people. And I'm on that, and I know that might be a struggle to think because, again, you know, we like to think, okay, God hates the sin, not the sinner, and X, Y, and Z. But then, I mean, honestly, I think the question is, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, you know, um, instead, not just say instead of does God hate you, but uh, do you hate God, right, with your actions? <laughs> uh, does what you do show that you hate God? And in turn, does God hate you? Um, because if he hates what you do, then technically he hates you because he hates the things you do. Now, I, I listen, listen, listen. It took an article for me to even get this understanding. <laughs> um, I was looking at karm.org and they had me looking at these verses and whatnot. And I just was like, you know what? Well. <laughs> it might be pulp today, but I mean, uh, does God hate you? Maybe, <laughs> maybe depending on what you're doing. Um, but let's talk about it. Let, let's get into these verses. Let's get into Bible because it ain't miracle right here. Let's get into Bible. Okay. So Psalm five and five says the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Well, Do you work iniquity? If so, then God probably hates you. And I know that don't sound good. That sounds bad, right? That sounds terrible to say. Um, and, and, and the other thing that came to my mind, and this is just me, right? As I was writing these verses down, um, and I and I get where, um, again, I was reading Calm.org, and they had me to look at these verses again and, and look at them deeper in the way that I'm looking at them now. Um, but I did wonder, like, well... Is it that the the biblical authors didn't have another way to say uh, what God feels, and so they use the word hate? 
you know, is it that? But then, hey, I mean, the Bible does say all scripture is, uh, <laughs> is, uh, you know, basically needed for the correction and whatnot. So I'm not taking nothing away from the Bible. I just was wondering, I just was wondering like, you know, maybe, maybe it's not hate, but that's the only word that we have to ex explain it. But I don't know. Y'all can go deep with that. I don't, I don't know. It's a random thought that came into my mind. But it do say here, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So it doesn't say thou hatest the iniquity. It say it hatest all workers of the of iniquity. So if you're a worker of iniquity, then perhaps God does hate you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm reading here. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, Psalm 11 and 5. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. So, uh, are you wicked? Do you love violence? Then, it's say here his soul hate, hate. Hateth. So his soul hates you. Um, <laughs> that, that's, I guess that's pretty, they went down to the soul, right? They say the soul. Um, and I think that, that, now the other thing that stood out to me in this verse is the Lord trieth the righteous. Because again, well, let's think about what I was talking about earlier, right? There, there's people that may be walking in sin. Let's just say it like that. You might be walking in sin, but then you're struggling because at the end of the day, you desire this relationship with God, even if you're not saying that or whatever the case is. I mean, you're, sometimes people's words say it or sometimes people's actions say it, but they don't realize that that's what it is. So if you're acknowledging God in any way while you're in the midst of sin, right, then I believe that God is working on you. Like you could, you potentially could be righteous, right, um, depending on your choices and what you decide to do and, and with the information, right? Um, so... That's something else, right? When you, that's something else. In my opinion, in my opinions. Um, so that's what I was kind of reminded of when I read this verse here. It says, the Lord trieth the righteous. Uh, but there are some that don't acknowledge God at all, right? There are some that just operate in their evil, right? Um, so I would assume, just me reading here, that that those type of people would be considered the wicked, right? And um, you know, you love violence, right? Um, so you say here, his soul hated. So if that's you today, then God might hate you, friend. <laughs> I hope that you decide. That. I don't know if you listening to the sound of my voice today. Then this is something to just uh, hopefully tug you over to the side of good versus evil. Um. You know, because we don't, I just, I don't think we want to be on God's bad side. You know what I'm saying? You know, God done did so much for us and opened doors and made a way and, and, and got, you know, Jesus and everything like that. And then we decide to use our free will for evil, which people do. Y'all know what people do. Um, So, I don't know. Something to think about. Something to think about. Um, Anyway, <laughs> let's. Keep going. Um, Leviticus 20 and 23, it says, And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. Y'all got to go deeper for yourself to see what all those nations did and whatnot. I mean... But if you're doing any of that, then he probably abhors you, which I believe is another way to say hate. Uh, and then y'all can, again, go deeper, look up the definitions for yourself. But, um, yeah, he don't want us to walk in the manners of nations that he cast out. And, I mean, now it says nation in the Bible, but... I was thinking of like all the nations because there's lots of nations that, you know, were here and they're not here no more. And, you know, we all know Sodom and Gomorrah. We all know, I mean, probably even like Roman. I don't know. We ain't going to go deeper with all that. But, um, so whatever they was doing, we not supposed to be doing. Um, you know, 
So does God hate you, friend? I mean, hey, I hope that anybody listening to the sound of my voice isn't in this category, um, to be honest. That's what I hope. Um, again, we can all go deeper. Plenty of verses in the Go Deeper section to let marinate on your heart, souls, and minds this morning. Um, definitely check out karm.org. I'll put that up on the screen. C-A-R-M dot O-R-G for those that are listening uh, on the podcast. Karm.org. The article that I read this morning was, Does God Hate Anyone? Um, that's what helped me get to this understanding for this morning. Um, on one hand, I did wonder, is this different from the, the first quote that I, the, the random question that came into my mind or the random phrase that came into my mind, uh, that the God of the Bible doesn't hate you. Um, ultimately, I believe that God loves us all. Yes. Right. And because he loves us all, he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us all. Right. Um. But just as much as he loves, which is what the article helps me to understood, and y'all can read it yourselves and whatnot, just as much as he loves. And the Bible says this as well, right? So it's not just that this that I'm just taking this author to stain. This all coincides with what the Bible says. Um, and that is not only does he love, but, you know, there's also going to be judgment. You know, he, he loves and he judges. And, um, again, none of us, none of us, all have sin, (laughs) y'all. So none of us can uphold the law. And so we needed a savior and there, that is Jesus. And either we believe that, right. Or we are going to be judged by the law. And again, that's up to you, friend, you know, again, and even this question today, you know, does God hate you? I guess that again, that's up to you and what you do. Um, so Although it may be pulp, it may be tangy, tart, you might not like it, y'all. That's the juice this morning. <laughs> I hope that you all encouraged and inspired by that. Um, yep, <laughs> that's the juice. I'm going to leave it alone. Here we go. The Bible verse of today is Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Friends, I hope you all enjoyed this juice this morning. Thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and Love. Your daily dose of inspiration, the juice. I pray you guys can go forth and have a wonderful day and I look forward to talking to you all tomorrow. If the Lord's will. Y'all know, is it, it's today Thursday? Yep, today's Thursday. Then it means that tomorrow is Friday and we have a new episode of God, Sex, and Love, the talk show that will be going live at 7 p.m. It is a chat with Mr. New Frank. So, yeah, be on the lookout for that, friends. But, yep, until tomorrow, if the Lord's will, I will chit-chat with you all then. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. This episode has been brought to you in part by Alexander Jared. Experience the emotive world of Alexander's writing, a podcast of stories that pull in the human emotions and takes you on a journey of suspense, thriller, heartbreak, and reflection. The stories have twists and turns that will keep you engaged and guessing. These episodes build the world around his novels. Let the journey begin.